Hello guys and welcome. I wasn't sure if anyone would be around here in the middle of the day, but here you all are. So welcome to our quick scope. This one is going to be with the kids. So hi Kirsten. Let's switch. Oh, I didn't test my thing before I logged on. Would you turn on that light for me? Mm -hmm. Hi, not quite ready for you yet. Mm -hmm. Can you give me a minute? Peace. So I just wanted to share how um, one of our free write activities connected with a book we were reading and I thought I would share it with you guys because then you could plan on that connection where we just kind of had it come up coincidentally. So hello, hi guys. Um, so I don't know if you all know, I'm Mary and I um, had my website up at the beginning. I homeschool four kids, 13, 11, 9, and 6. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about Friday Free Write and just share an activity. So if you aren't familiar with Friday Free Write, that is a concept put out by Julie at Brave Writer. This is her web address. And every Friday, she shares a writing prompt that your kids can just free write about. It's not work. And she explains the whole free writing philosophy on there, too. And you can definitely check it out. Um, I'm going to show you where to find them on her page. So this is her page. Sorry, my tripod's not ready. And if you go to bravewriter.com and click on blog, every Friday, you will see her free write. This is her most recent one, if feet could talk. But if you click down here in the uh, tags here, you can click Friday free write and you can actually get all of them. So the one I'm going to talk about here was back on December 18th. It was called Disgruntled Toy. And her suggestion, Dan, was imagine one of your toys, or maybe a character you created for a video game, is disgruntled with you for how you've used them in play. Now write a grumpy letter from that toy or character to you. Well, what worked out perfectly is that we had just finished reading the crayon books. So if you're interested in trying this free write, the perfect thing to do is to read before you do it to inspire the kids a little is this book the day the crayons quit it goes perfectly this book is a bunch of a pack of crayons that are all angry <laughs> at their owner <laughs> they're all angry at their owner and they write letters from disgruntled crayons so i'll share with you one hi duncan it's me red crayon we need to talk you make me work harder than any of your other crayons all year long, I wear myself out coloring fire engines, apples, strawberries, and everything else that's red. I even work on the holidays. I have to color all the Santas at Christmas and all the hearts on Valentine's Day. I need a rest. Your overworked friend, Red Crayon. And then it goes through all the different colors. So gray is really angry because he always has to carry that are color really big animals like rhinoceroses and humpback whales and hippos. And he wonders why he can't ever be used to, to just color in something small because he's tired. The only crayon that's happy is the green one, but he really encourages Duncan to get this thing settled soon because it's really bothering everyone. So it goes through every color. Like the peach crayon is really mad because he ripped the wrapper off the peach crayon and so now the peach crayon is naked and peach crayon doesn't like that. So it was just, it's a hilarious book. Somebody I think threw up there what age range. Well this obviously is a kid's picture book but we all enjoyed it. Um, it's a hysterical book. In fact I keep trying to to use it for scoping and every time it's in the bedrooms upstairs because someone has slipped back upstairs with it because it's a funny book. But if you read this, it's just really inspirational and then you can do Julie's assignment in the free write folders. So my kids were just going to share their free writes with you that they wrote. Yeah, isn't it right? And Olivia's in high school. So you know, Olivia's laughing about it. And, you know, I think it's one that all ages can enjoy. So definitely grab that book. And then my kids are going to share their free rights that they wrote um, inspired by this. So this is my 13-year-old Kaylee. All right, Kaylee. Dear Kaylee, when you finally moved us in the basement, I thought you were going to play with us, 
but you just put us in a cram box. Please take us out again. It would be much appreciated. Also remember that sadly and sorrowfully, I write this for all of us. Thanks, your American Girl Dolls. We had just packed up her American Girl Dolls and put them in a bin in the closet so that they could still be pulled out, but they weren't being pulled out as much anymore. So Patricia, the goofy face behind me, would you like to read yours? Um, this one is from, um, this is, Dear Patricia, I am still here at the Science Center, you know, in a box with lots of lost stuff. Help me, your mom's headband leopard print. Yes, Patricia lost her mom's headband that was leopard print at the Science Center. So she wrote a letter from the leopard print headband, who is still lost, crammed in a box. All right, here's David. Well, I got eight plushies once and... He got will... eight Pokemon plushies one time and one is missing. I kind of wish I took my guns because I have them for that, but it's like two days from Evie. Hi, it's Evie. You lost me like two days ago or a long time ago. So please get me out. I'm scared. Could you look for me? I think I'm under the covers. Your evolution friend, Evie. Evie's evolution Pokemon. Yes. <laughs> So that was from one of the missing Pokemon plushies. But he has thankfully since then been found. So that letter saved him this morning. Daniel, did you want to read yours? No. Do you want me to read it? Okay, Daniel is six. Do you want to come stand with me while I read it? Yes. No, he wants to be camera shy. But here's what the six-year-old wrote. Hi, Daniel. It's from Halucha. I'm very, very mad at you. You never play Pokemon with stuffed toys. I'm bored. I'm so mad at you. Can you spend some time with me? Your Pokemon friend, Halucha. It is a sad thing, Kirsten. Now, for those of you wondering how my six-year-old wrote that, um, we have adopted the philosophy that writing is the thoughts in our head that we share on paper, but transcribing is not being a writer. So mommy does the transcribing in Daniel's Free Write Friday journal. So that's how his is written. All of my other kids opted to write themselves, though they all have the option of me writing for them at any time. And yeah, it incorporates so many things. So if you're not looking on Julie's blog, and we don't always get to it every Friday, but I love to go look for some ideas. Um, my daughter, my 13-year-old, actually does hers. I teach her writing class on Wednesdays, and so I have them free write at the beginning of every class, and I often pull it from there. But all my kids just have little spirals they decorated, and whenever we do a free write, Alicia, you're so sweet. Whenever we do a free write, they just date it, and um, then we just have a collection. And I have to be honest, of all the schoolwork, that they do. These are what I think I will save and treasure because they are full of all their stories and thoughts. So, and for those of you thinking of getting started, um, my six-year-old sometimes, just while we're free writing, draws pictures and then he tells me the story and I just write it around the pictures when everyone else is done. And I have a free write Friday journal too. I have not written a letter from a disgruntled toy. Oh, I did write a letter from a disgruntled toy. What was it that I wrote it from? Oh, yeah. I wrote it from a set of lawn toys that I was finally getting rid of. Um, of my son's chainsaw. And no, I didn't do anything with them yet. But they're very angry because they're just sitting on my hope chest. So, oh no, Lizzie. Yeah, we keep them in like a little magazine holder that um, has all the free write Friday stuff there. So, no, we're, we'll talk about those when I'm all done. So that was it, guys. Julie, I see you hopped on here at the end. I keep getting you right at the end. Um, my two year old, your face is <laughs> It's so fun when they when they draw something that other people can recognize. And yes, then write a story with it. So I just wanted to hop on and share that because when Julie posted that free write, I just thought, Julie, I don't know, you missed the beginning, but your free write about a letter to a disgruntled to from a disgruntled toy fits so perfectly with this literature book. So I was just sharing that if people hadn't done that free write yet, read this book first to inspire their kids. And it's a letter from all the different crayons 
to um, their owner because they're unhappy about how they're uh, being used. And then my kids all read their free rights from their disgruntled toys. So that's all guys. We are actually off to the library to get some new books no. from all of your scopes. I have a huge list. So thanks. Hi, Kim. And we will see you guys later. And Julie, if you have time to watch the replay, I think the kids would love that the brave writer heard their free rights. All right. Bye, guys. Wait, is that the real Julie Bogart? That was the real. They're wondering if it's the real Julie Bogart. It's the real Julie Bogart who heard their, who could go hear their free rights. Hey. Oh, smile. Oh. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Have a great day.